Welcome and thank you so much for attending our video, Exploring Dental Schools Virtually Top Tips. So now more than ever, our world needs talented and dedicated healthcare providers. We applaud you for making the decision to join the ranks of this valued part of society. But today, the journey to dental school looks quite different, doesn't it? The pandemic has affected everything. And one question you might be asking yourself is how do I figure out what schools are the best fit for me if I can't travel? So that's what our panelists are gonna to discuss today. Top tips for exploring dental schools virtually. So I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce myself and our three panelists. So I'm Elizabeth Johnson, the Director of Recruitment for IDEA um, Application Services, obviously at IDEA. And my three lovely panelists are Jerry McCombs, the Admissions Manager in the Office of Student Affairs for the University of Pittsburgh School of Dental Medicine, Crystal Ridgely, the Associate Director of Admissions and Student Engagement at the University of Colorado School of Dental Medicine, and Sarah Petrakis, Director of Admissions at Harvard School of Dental Medicine. So um, our panelists are gonna cover three general areas and then provide some words of wisdom at the end. So the three areas are dental school resources, core values, and thinking outside the box. So without further ado, Sarah, could you please get us started by sharing with prospective applicants what dental school resources are currently available to help them explore schools virtually? Sure, I'd be happy to. Thank you, Liz, and welcome everyone. We are so happy you're able to join us. Assuming dental schools will be offering virtual interviews this fall, this means that you likely will not have the opportunity to visit the campus in person to help you get a sense of whether a program is a good fit for you. I think it's important that you learn enough about a program in order to develop a gut about whether you think you'll be happy there. In order to do so in this current environment, it's gonna take a little bit of extra research on your behalf, and I recommend starting with your website, with the website. All schools, if they don't already, should have a place on their website where they post updates to their application process, such as how they'll be handling DATs this cycle and any other policy changes in response to COVID-19. I'd recommend bookmarking these pages and checking them frequently. It is always a good practice to review the school's mission, curriculum, and FAQs, in addition to school-specific application requirements. We also recommend that you explore the student's life and about sections on the school's web pages to learn more about options available to you beyond the classroom, such as community outreach and social groups. Recognizing that students may not have a chance to visit school this fall, many schools are working hard to provide additional resources for applicants, such as virtual campus tours and open houses. Virtual campus tours provide you with an opportunity to see the facilities in physical spaces where you could potentially be spending your next four years. Some schools will also be offering open houses in addition to participating in the Go Dental Fair. This is an opportunity to learn more about the program, hear from admission staff and current students, and get more of your questions answered. Another way to learn more about the program is through its social media presence. You can usually find links to Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube right on the dental school's homepage. Take some time to explore these. They will help you to develop a sense of the community and the culture of the school. So the website is an important tool for applicants to utilize this cycle to learn as much as they can about the school's program, community, and culture as possible. Something else that is important to consider is the school's core values, which Jerry McCombs is going to cover. Jerry? Thank you, Sarah. Um, more than ever, core values are going to be important for you as you look to find the school that's going to be the best fit for you. With all the dental schools out there, every school has something that is a little bit different and a little bit unique to themselves. And I encourage you to do your research to figure out what is the best fit for you. One thing that you really need to think about is what setting do you want to be in? Um, dental schools all have their own niches as far as um, facilities, areas, rural locations, as well as being in an urban environment. So you need to determine what you are going to be comfortable in. Will you be able to thrive in an environment that is in an urban population and in a city? Those are all things that you need to think about. Another thing is value. What do you value? What is important to you in your de dental education? Is 
the social aspect of things going to be of any concern to you? Do you um, find a way that is going to be most, um, you know, the setting best for you as far as, you know, a learning environment? Are you looking for a specialty, things of that nature? So what is value? And included in that becomes finances. You know, what role does finance play in to your dental education? Is a little bit more of a, a tuition going to make things a make or break for you as far as where to go and what school you want to choose? Is the benefit that a school provides you with their curriculum or their clinical experience, does that outweigh the financial um, costs that may offset it? Some things that could be helpful for you would be some, some of the calculators that are available for you to figure out what this is going to cost. CNN has a calculator that you can go ahead and determine cost of living, as well as studenthousingcalculator.com. Another thing you want to do is look at the FAQs. They're constantly changing on websites. You want to look at curriculum pages. You want to see how programs are adapting and adjusting and to see what decisions are being made as this application process and cycle changes in ways that we've never seen before. What I want to do now is turn it over to Crystal, who's going to talk about thinking outside the box. Thank you so much, Jerry. I'm here to talk to you guys about thinking outside the box. This is going to be adding to Sarah and Jerry's uh, contribution to this um, webinar. Um, one thing you should do, in addition to checking out each school's website, is look at the Chamber of Commerce website for each city where the dental school is located. I know for the state of Colorado, a big drawing point for our school is the skiing and the mountains. Mm -hmm. You can look up and see what type of ski passes that we offer. This can be beneficial for you while you're researching the area and the state. Um, consider connecting with the ASDA chapters at each dental school. This can be a powerful resources and tool for you and see if you can connect virtually with current students or alumni. Check out websites of other schools in the area. For the University of Colorado, we have four branch campuses, Denver, Boulder, Colorado Springs, and Anschutz. So check out to see what the other schools are doing they can tell you a lot about the city and state where the uh, dental school is located. In addition to that, you can reach out to the pre-dental clubs and they can talk to you about the area as well. Mentors. If you haven't already developed relationships virtually, I suggest you do so with pre-health advisors, pre-dental advisors, and check in with your admission folks at the dental school you plan on applying to. In an effort to build a relationship with someone, you know, try not to email them with a general question that's answerable by the website. Make sure your message is clear and direct. Consistent communication with professors is going to be needed for them to write you a fantastic letter of recommendation. Also, when you're ready to submit, double check the information submitted on your ADSYS application. Is it correct? And make sure to check your email often. Is your email spelled correctly? Are you confused about something substantial? Do you still have questions about the requirements or your submission? This is the time to reach out to admissions officers before the application opens officially. Kind of refrain from asking, based on what I told you, do you think I have a chance of being accepted? <laughs> if the school you're interested in applying to has listed other application attributes that they find important outside of GP and DAT, review it and create an application roadmap. Make sure you measure yourself with the admission stats. When choosing the right school for you, think about these things. Where do you want to live? Where would you like to practice? Take a grain of salt in rankings, good branding, blogs, and make sure to research the school thoroughly. Look up articles. A lot of schools now are helping the community through COVID-19, and that is something important to you that you can look that information up. I will reiterate what you know, Sarah and Jerry already said, admission stats, application timelines, make sure you're following those. Look at the demographics and history of the school. Those pre-health organizations, career outcomes, and try to get in touch with those current students. Lastly, we're probably going to do virtual interviews. We may. And if so, dress professionally. Remember, you can be professional up top and party at the bottom, but make sure we don't see the party at the bottom. 
that's all I got. Thank you, Crystal. That's a perfect note to uh, end us with here. Um, so before we say goodbye, um, just, you know, one last, you know, word of wisdom from each of our panelists. Um, Jerry, uh, how about we start with you? Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, you know, the one thing that I would tell you is you, this is going to be a time that is constantly changing and evolving. We don't know what the next weeks or months will bring. So one thing I would encourage you to do is to apply now, um, even if you don't have a DAT score, get your application in. Schools will be handling the review process di differently. And one thing with the dental admissions uh, application process, you need to be patient with the process. Something that I tell applicants all the time is, you know, it's a hurry up and wait environment. You go ahead, apply, and then the next thing you know, it may be a few weeks. Do not become discouraged and, you know, best of luck to you. Thanks, Jerry. Crystal, how about you? Make sure you um, submit a thorough application. Even though we're going through a global pandemic, you don't take that for granted. You are still applying in a very competitive field and make sure you put your best foot forward. Um, one thing I wanna to add to that is, you know, the competition is steep and you wanna make sure that you hit all the marks and you submit your application, like Jerry said, very early, as early as you can. Thank you. And last but certainly not least, Sarah. Sure. Um, please know that, you know, schools are going to be as flexible as they can. Uh, we're not looking to penalize students for things that are beyond their control and, and things are changing rapidly. Um, we're gonna do our best to stay in touch with you, um, but, uh, and know that uh, together, that we're in it together and um, we'll get there eventually. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you panelists for, you know, sharing this important information with students. Um, you know, students viewing this, I hope this information is useful to you as you navigate the dental school journey during this very unprecedented time. Um, and I want to reiterate what everyone said here, just be patient, apply early, um, and, and bring your best foot forward as you're going through this process. So um, thank you again. Adia uh, Go Dental has lots of free events um, over the course of the year. So you're at, you're at one of them right now, the virtual fair, but we have others in the course of the year. So please check us out often. Um, thank you again. Best of luck and we hope to see you on the other side. Thank you.